Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. A sure sign of warming weather is the annual spawning run of rainbow trout. No other place celebrates this rite of spring better than the village of Orleans in the town of Barton. Across the fences, Keith Silva went to the rocky banks of the Willoughby River to try to see this fish tale for himself and learn from Vermont Fish and Wildlife why this migration is an indicator of the health of Vermont's lakes, rivers, and streams. The Willoughby River runs through the village of Orleans and also it flows into the Barton River. The Barton River flows out to Lake Memphremagog. In Lake Memphremagog, we have lots of different fish species, but one of them that is really kind of unique is what we call steelhead rainbow trout. When the conditions are right, you'll see them jumping out of the water. It gets anglers excited, but anybody, even if they don't fish, likes seeing these big, beautiful fish jump out of the water. It's a chance for people that aren't normally fishing to actually see a, a fish, and a big one at that. When the water is high enough, and when maybe the water's a little bit colder, they can actually swim up through and you would never see them. But it's only when the flows are at just the right level and the water temperature is, is warm enough for them to have enough you know, energy and strength to actually jump out of the water that you'll actually see them. We have many different species of fish in Vermont, some that are native, some that are introduced. Some of them are more tolerant to poor habitat or pollution, that kind of thing. These steelhead rainbow trout, the fact that these fish are there surviving, reproducing on their own is an indication that we have good water quality. The water's clean enough to support these fish, to, su to support their entire life cycle from eggs to the juveniles and then out to the lake. So the fact that these fish can complete their entire life cycle in the Lake Memphremagog system and its tributaries indicates that we have good water quality and good habitat, which should matter to everybody because if we've got these species surviving and thriving, that means that conditions are good for the entire ecosystem, including us. That's cool. You got about five. Yeah, you think so? You got about five? Yeah. What's the best way to see these fish and you know, what's your tips for, for, for seeing fish jumping, Judd? Best time to go is usually gonna be around late April, maybe into early May. You have to do one of two things. You have to get lucky and be there at the right time, <laughs> or you have to put your time in, because sometimes it, you just go there multiple times and eventually you get it. Because these fish, they need the right conditions to, in order to jump, it can be hit or miss. But, you know, on a really good day, you might see over 10 fish jump in an hour. According to biologists, the best time to see the fish jump is on a warm day between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. For updates and more information, visit the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department's website, vtfishandwildlife.com. Starting your own business is a risky venture. But to help lessen the risk, the Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce is supporting and challenging Vermont college students who want to become entrepreneurs. Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollan takes us to an event that offers big rewards for college students who have a plan, a market, and problem-solving abilities. So we're looking for the people that are out there that might be willing to purchase our tool to then decrease their labor costs, save them money. So we're gonna be These college to students are talking business because they're business owners. So my company's name is Beach It. We are the Airbnb for, for beach parking. The students have come to the University of Vermont to compete in a business pitch competition. It's the college edition of a contest called Launch BT. Oh, we're going through the patent process now, so we uh, anticipate a preliminary patent um, before our full-scale patent once we've refined our design. From there, we Partners Manny Aratakis and Jack Beauperlant hope that their sweet gadget will speak to the judges. Beauperlant, who was a Vermont Maple Ambassador in 2016, came up with the idea. 
I'm an experienced maple sugar maker in the state of Vermont. I saw a need with uh, tubing installations and applying spouts to uh, maple sap tubing and also other fittings in the, in the industry and uh, just saw a need to create a tool that was a little more efficient uh, for the sugar makers in the state and around New England. Bo Perlant teamed up with engineering student Aritakis during an entrepreneurship class at Vermont Technical College. Over the course of the semester, the two turned the idea into a working prototype. This is our first physical working prototype that would be an expectation of what our final product would look like. Um, so, you know, we're going to refine it some more, finish prototyping process, and then go into production. This pioneering spirit has always been part of Vermont's DNA. Eric Munson is a professor of entrepreneurship at UVM's Grossman School of Business. He says that in the past few years, he's seen younger students starting businesses. In the past, the expectations would be we would train them up and when they would graduate, they would either go off and get a job at a large company or they would, in particular because they want to stay here in Vermont, make their own company, make their own job to stay here. But we're having students starting companies in their sophomore years now. And I've had a number of students who I've met here who've had businesses before they got here. The worst part about getting to the beach is finding a parking spot. I'm a beach lifeguard in Ocean Grove, New Jersey. I love going to the beach, and unfortunately I don't live close enough to the beach to walk, so I have to drive there, and I've gone to the beach many times and circle around for 45 minutes to find a parking spot, and I thought there has to be a better solution, and so that's how Beach It came to be. Andrew Smith came from Middlebury to pitch his business, which he plans to launch this summer. It's a website and app that pairs homeowners in seaside towns with tourists looking to rent a parking spot for a day at the beach. In order to develop a business model, I came with my idea, but I had to see if people were interested in, interested in what I had to offer, what Beach It has to offer. And so I sent out a ton of Facebook group surveys about the product and got a lot of great feedback. I have 20 spaces already signed up and 85 people interested in renting. Communities are built by entrepreneurs and small business owners, and we need more of them. John Antonucci is the Director of Entrepreneurship at the Lake Champlain Regional Chamber of Commerce, who sponsored the event. Entrepreneurs, by having an idea and going after it, and going down and taking the first step and then the second step, uh, and going down the path of actually creating a business, is an incredibly valuable exercise. That business may totally fail, but everything that they'll learn in the process will make them not only a better entrepreneur, but a better person, a better professional, uh, and it will give them all kinds of skills that they need to be successful in whatever they want to do with their life. And that's exactly what we do. We teach people. We provide research. The top three teams of the Launch VT Collegiate Competition split $7,000 in cash. Beyond that, the winning team gets an entry to the next Launch VT contest, where they'll compete against other startups from around the state for some high-stakes prizes. We award the winners over $100,000 in cash and in-kind services. And then three years ago, we started Launch VT Collegiate to give entrepreneurs across Vermont's colleges an opportunity to compete for cash prizes. And the winner of Launch VT Collegiate goes on to compete in Launch VT. Organizers hoped that the opportunity to go on to a more competitive arena would give the college teams some real-world experience, pitching their ideas to other entrepreneurs as well as investors. It would give them a chance to get some feedback and maybe even win some money. What they did not anticipate was how successful the idea would prove to be. It's kind of nicer inviting a college student to be on the competition, but no one really expects them to win. But last year, I mean, Peter and I were able to prove that wrong. Not only were they able to go to the professional launch VT competition in May, they won it and they actually beat out a team of UVM professors who got second place. It was the ultimate Cinderella story. I mean, we created Launch VT Collegiate to have, uh, to allow the winners to compete in Launch VT with the hopes that that might happen. Um, certainly, we, that would be an ultimate outcome. Um, we did not think that that would happen in the second year. So uh, it was really great, and it definitely confirmed for us that um, just because you're a college student doesn't mean you can't run or start uh, a business here that can scale and do really well. So if I go to Burlington, Vermont.
and then you can look through a bunch of different um, local internships, part-time jobs, volunteering opportunities. Max Robbins and his partner Peter Silverman won the 2017 collegiate competition and went on to win the larger Launch VT one a few months later. They worked on their business for over a year before their win, spending a lot of that time practicing their pitching skills. We were going to every single networking event around just to meet as many people as we could. A lot of it was trying to get them to post jobs on our job platform that we had, but the, despite that, it was really just getting to know pretty much everyone we could and pitch our business to everyone we could locally. Their business is called MajorWise, and it's an online network that connects high school students around the country with local internships and volunteer opportunities. The two have been able to get the company off the ground thanks largely to the cash and in-kind prizes they won, including office space here at the Vermont Center for Emerging Technology in Burlington. The money from LaunchVT really gave us a good year of runway to be able to keep working on our business, plus the revenue we were bringing in, but we were actually able to get employees that could help us uh, with building that, from people to help us with our sales. We could increase our development by hiring additional developers. It's a trial by fire. Uh, you learn as you go. You learn through your mistakes. You learn by doing. Uh, and there is a million little things that you pick up along the way that you don't even realize you're learning that become very applicable to whatever you do next in your life. For many of these entrepreneurs, what's next for them is working on their business full time. Since we launched our platform for high schools, we've gotten 16 schools on in seven different states across the country, which is really good initial traction for us. We've also, we're in the middle of raising a $150,000 pre-seed round uh, to give us a year of runway once we graduate until we can make it into a seed round, and of that we have $50,000 committed so far. As for the collegiate competition, the winners were? Vermont Maple Innovation. Now, it's time to start thinking about their next pitch competition. We're very excited for that. I think in between that, you're going to see a lot of progression in our patent process as well. Uh, we really want to bring this, uh, you know, everything we can bring to the table for the Launch VT competition in May and uh, really put this thing out to the market. These entrepreneurs may still be students, but they're learning how to start and run a business in the real world. And pretty soon, they might be hiring. In Burlington, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. The Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce also sponsors the Launch VT program, which awards $35,000 in cash and over $100,000 in services. For more information about that program and to learn about the May 31st demo night, visit the website launchvt.com. Once again, thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.